This is the first of a few films, two or three, to show you how to produce, uh, to take your model rather, from model space into paper space, uh, save it and print it. So I've opened up a sheet here, millimetre in millimetres, and drawn a cam on. Now if you look across the top here, the screen we're looking at is uh, a little larger than an A4 across because we've got about 340 millimetres across the top and on the Y scale here we've got something like uh, 220, 230. So we've got something that's a little larger than an A4 and we've got a drawing of a cam here that would fill up, I would think, uh, an A4 sheet of paper. Now, what we do is we um, create a what's called a viewport. So we go to view and named views and create view. And this box comes up on the end of my cursor. I left click, keep my finger down on the button, take it all across so I'm encircling the whole uh, drawing, take my finger off the button. When I take it off the button, it will it says view one, it'll ask me to give it a name. So I'll call it cam and say OK. And we can make as many of these as we like. If we wanted a detail here, we can make another one here and call that detail, whatever. I think you can make a thousand or ten thousand or something like that, I can't remember, but anyway, more than you need. The next step is to go to paper here. Down the bottom it says paper one. We can have as many sheets of paper as we like. But I click on to paper one and here I'll go to file page setup. So here's my page setup. At the moment it's got a default for some reason to B5. So I'm going to change that to uh, A4. There it is. A4. My printers, because the, the type of office printers we've got here go default to portrait. So I've got to change that to landscape. So now I've got a printer paper, uh, printer paper is A4 landscape and my drawing sheet size is the same. If you had to produce say, an A1 drawing and you were only had the ability to print in A4, uh, then that's why that's how you might want to change these around because you may have to tie on the drawing. But for here we're not going to get into those details. Down here we've got some other variations, print margins, print grid, but if you've got just a normal straightforward Xerox copying printer, A4 size, print grid is going to be a bit iffy with it, it's not going to look that good. If you've got a good professional printer obviously it'll print. Print construction lines if you want, print crop marks if you're going to put it into a magazine or something, keep centred, I'd leave that. One to one, full size, leave that. And fit, I wouldn't touch that. Okay. So now I've set up my uh, paper space, and that's an A4 sheet of paper in landscape. I now go to view and viewports. Now this is I'm doing this in 18. If you was doing it in one uh, previous to 18, you'd go to insert and you'd find viewports there in insert. But in 18 now they've put them both together, which makes more sense. And now they're under view, so viewport. So I click onto viewport. Then it asks me, again, I've got this cursor at the end, I left click, drag it down uh, to bottom right, top left, to bottom right, take my finger off. It asks which viewport I want to import in there, and I'm going to say it's the cam one, and go to. And there's, uh, there's the cam. Now, if I select the viewport here, right click, go to properties, it'll tell me about it. It's in wireframe, which I know that's what I'm dealing with here. Here it says viewport. If I click onto viewport, it tells me the name of the viewport that it's selected, which is called cam. And here it'll tell you the layer. So if you've got lots of layers in your drawing, they'll all be seen here and you can turn them on or off. The background is transparent. Uh, you can actually, if you take that off, you could put a color uh, in, the, in the background if you wanted to, choose a color. Mm but we're not going to do that, we'll leave ours transparent. Scale says fixed, and that's greyed out. We've just dragged it in at an arbitrary scale. If I click onto here, it tells me the scale it's come in at, 1 to 1.33. Now, if I want to change that, I can either type that in, 
I can do one full colon to whatever, or uh, one equals will work as well. Or I simply go to the right here, left click, and choose a scale. So if I choose one to one, because we know this, is, this should fill up an A4 sheet of paper because that's the way I drew it. I say OK. Uh, leave the camera thing, visible box. We leave the box on for here, for now. Say OK. Now, here it is. It's full scale in that viewport. Now it's a bit too big. So I've got to come to the edges here and make the size of the viewport bigger. In fact, it's a bit squashed here, but I can just about get it on the page, I think. Yep, just about. So that's filling up an A4 sheet of paper at one to one. And we know that that's about right, because that's how we drew it. We know how big the, uh, the, the, space, the, the um, model space was that we were dealing with. This box around, obviously here, is just not going to print probably over the edges there. So on this occasion, we don't want to see that box. So I'm going to left click, right click, properties, viewport. I'm going to turn off the visible box. There it is. Looks a lot neater. Now this viewport is looking back at model space. So if I go back to model space and change the model space, so if I choose a circle, come on here, I go C for center, G for grid. I've now edited my cam in model space and when I go back to paper space you can see that that has changed. So this whole drawing, this whole viewport, nothing outside the viewport, but everything with inside the viewport is looking back at the model space. Anything I draw on here, so if I just draw a box up here, if we go back to model space, you can see that's not there. So it doesn't go both ways. Here's my paper space, there's my model space. Change the model space, that updates the paper space. Anything you do on a paper space does not go back to the model space. Okay, so that's it in. There it is on paper. So now we can print or we can save if we're going to send it to someone. So if we went to uh, File As, Save As, um, obviously we can save there. But if we were going to print it, we might want to save it as, as an EPS. So big, that would give us good quality. We can go to setup, uh, resolution, we can have maximum resolution if we want, it's 400 resolution, if I go maximum, it goes 4000. So we get a, um, a choice on, on the quality of, of what we do. And then we can say, okay, uh, save. Uh, that's just, you know, watching its back saying something might not work, but of course it will do. I'll go to save. Saving as an EPS takes a few seconds because it's uh, I've saved it as top quality EPS, so that will take just a bit of time to uh, to save. If we just saved it as a JPEG or a um, PDF or whatever it was, it would save it immediately. And there it is. You can now send that to a, a printer's, and they could print that out A1 size, and it would be spot on, high quality. Okay. <clears throat> so, um, subsequent films, we're going to talk about um, other types of scaling, putting multiple images on the same sheets of paper, and creating more sheets of paper. But for this one, that's the lot, that's, that's the procedure, that's the way you do it. And so, that's your lot.